In this webinar, we will start with a quick introduction to 5G NR simulation in NetSim V12.1, including the different 5G NR devices and frequency bands supported in NetSim. Next, we will see the millimeter wave five five layer channel propagation models. Subsequently, we'll be explaining about NetSim results dashboard, various log files and metrics, and specific metrics specific to 5G NR simulations. After this, we will move on to discuss a few interesting examples of 5G NR, which explains how our customers use our 5G library. We will then be talking about the 5G feature roadmap for our upcoming releases and provide suggestions for R&D in 5G using NetSim. Finally, we'll have a Q&A session to answer all your queries. The two major trends uh, behind the race to 5G are the explosive growth in the demand for wireless broadband, especially video, and secondly, the Internet of Things, IoT, where a large number of smart devices communicate over the internet. To achieve these objectives, 5G is envisaged to provide broadband speed greater than 10 Gbps, uh, which you can see over here, ultra low latency less than one millisecond, and a very high device density of greater than one million devices per square kilometer. So 5G networks and devices will require substantially different architectures, radio access technologies, and five layer algorithms. These include OFDM or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, shorter slot durations, corresponding to increased subcarrier spacing, uh, that is for increased signal bandwidth and shorter latency. And finally, massive MIMO antenna arrays and operation at millimeter wave frequencies. NetSim's new 5G library features full stack end-to-end -end packet level simulation of 5G millimeter wave networks. That is, it models all the layers of the protocol stack as well as applications running over the network. It is a system-wide simulation and is done at a packet level. NetSim follows a standalone architecture and is based on 3GPP 38 series standards. The 5G library is architected to connect to the base component of NetSim and in turn to the other components of NetSim, thereby providing functionalities such as the TCP IP stack, interfacing with other wireless protocols such as 802.11 Wi Fi routing algorithms, animation, traces, etc. This means you can set up simulations to communicate between the 5G module to other modules of NetSim. For example, you can set up a firewall in a 5G EPC. Or as another example, a 5G mobile node can communicate with a Wi-Fi laptop, which would represent a real-world video call. The NetSim GUI features an intuitive drag and drop and point and click functionality for scenario creation. There is no programming required like in other simulators. All the results of simulations are available in one place with rich graphical and tabular displays. NetSim's protocol source C code is shipped along with standard and pro versions. It is modular and customizable to help researchers to design and test their own 5G protocols. NetSim also comes with extensive documentation. NetSim features a graphical user interface that allows users to interact with the simulator for creating, modifying, and saving simulation experiments. This is much easier to use when compared to command line or text-based simulator interfaces. What you see on the screen is a typical 5G scenario. As you can see, the different devices supported in NetSim's 5G module are UEs, GNBs, which is next generation node B, or you could think of it as a base station, EPC, evolved packet core, and other regular networking devices such as routers, switches, servers, etc. 
in addition netsim supports buildings users can place gnbs uvs inside buildings to simulate indoor rf propagation effects the epc or evolved packet core provides end to end ip connectivity between ng new generation core and the gnb the epc can connect to routers in the ng core which can in turn connect to switches access points servers etc as you can see netsim allows for end to end connections between ues and remote hosts over ip any regular netsim application such as ftp or voice or video can be simulated to run over tcp ip this application can be edge to core or it can be edge to edge this means we can simulate traffic flows from a remote server to and fro in ue or it can be from one ue to another ue netsim can scale up to hundreds of ues and gnbs unlike link level simulators which are limited to one or two ues and one gnb netsim's end to end simulation involves transmission of ip packets by the upper layers the 5g nr radio resource management functions do not work directly with ip packets but they rather work with rlc pdus hence ip packets are segmented by the rlc entity it is then reassembled at the destination netsim supports different mac scheduling algorithms which determine the five the five resource allocation in multi ue scenarios these algorithms include proportional fair round robin max throughput and strictly fair link adaptation refers to the dynamic selection of data rate based on channel conditions netsim supports this whereby the modulation and coding schemes change based on the cqi or the channel quality indicator flexible subcarrier spacing in the nr frame means the subcarrier spacing is no longer fixed to 15 kilohertz and the number of slots increases with the numerology mu also the slots can be uplink downlink or mixed netsim supports both fr1 and fr2 frequency ranges fr1 includes the sub 6 gig frequency bands some of which are bands traditionally used by previous standards but has been extended to cover potential new spectrum offerings it runs from 410 megahertz to 7.1 gigahertz the other is fr2 which inc which includes frequency bands from about 24 gigahertz to 52 gigahertz these are bands in the millimeter wave they have shorter range but higher available bandwidth netsim also supports carrier aggregation and all the different file layer modulation methods the millimeter wave channel propagation models supported in netsim include models based on environment such as rural macro urban macro urban micro etc models based on ue position include indoor and outdoor netsim features a building model which can be used to to introduce indoor propagation effects models based on los state include los and nlos models outdoor to indoor that is o2i models such as high loss and low loss models are used to calculate penetration losses when ues are placed inside buildings on the right is a screenshot of the netsim graphical user interface where all the parameters are neatly organized as a drop down the results of a simulation run are displayed in a unified dashboard for convenient analysis results presented graphically are application throughputs and link throughputs results presented in tabular data sets include packets generated packets received end to end delays collisions errors queuing in buffers route tables tcp retransmissions acts etc the results are organized per interface per device per application and per link in addition 
aggregated metrics are calculated and presented system wide that is at a network level information in the trace files contain individual packet flow and individual event execution protocol log files records a myriad of information pertaining to protocol operation necessary for in depth analysis and debugging the results can be exported to a csv and can also be printed as an html page for presentation purposes netsim supports a wide variety of networks including the newly released 5g nr library we will now run netsim so as you can see here there are a number of networks that are supported in netsim the examples menu on the left comes with a large set of pre-built examples and experiments the featured examples are organized network wise and come with dedicated documentation this helps users to get started with the network topology and understand the protocol internals there are several interesting examples included for the 5g nr library from which we will be discussing two featured examples we will now start with the example effect of ue distance on throughput for both fr1 and fr2 the pre saved examples for this can be accessed by clicking the fr1 it is loading the saved 5g scenario in this example we understand how the downlink udp throughput of a ue varies as its distance from a gnb is increased the network consists of one gnb and one ue the gnb is connected to the epc which in turn connects to a server the wired links are all 1 gbps links the ue and the gnb are placed such that the distance between them is 100 meters initially to access the lte nr properties right click on gnb and select properties go to the interface lte nr physical layer initially you can see the carrier aggregation ca type is set to interband ca and the ca count is set to 2 the ca configuration is set to ca 2 dl 1 ul n39 n41 under ca1 properties you can see that the numerology is set to 2 and the channel bandwidth is set to 40 megahertz for ca2 properties numerology is set to 2 and channel bandwidth is set to 100 megahertz the millimeter wave propagation model is set as urban macro the RF propagation channel characteristics are set to path loss only. LOS mode is set to user defined with LOS probability set to zero. This is the network configuration, parameter configuration. We now go to the application properties. Network traffic is modeled by setting a basic CBR application between wired node three and UE four. You can see the pink line showing the application flow from wired node 3 to UE4. The transport protocol in this case is set as UDP. The packet size remains the default 1460 bytes and the interarrival time is set to 23 microseconds to generate sufficient traffic to saturate the network. We now set the simulation time to 0.3 seconds and we run the simulation. The simulation will take about two minutes to complete. The entire configuration that has been created is now sent to the core simulation engine 